What is going on everybody? I'm back again on Splice's YouTube channel with another video. I hope you guys are having a great day. And today I'm gonna be turning this boring beat into something fire. I'm also gonna be dropping gems along the way, some stuff that you can apply to your production. So all those beats that you have on your laptop that are unfinished and you've been procrastinating on finishing, you can apply these gems and hopefully that can help you finish that project file. So no talking, let's hear what the beat sounds like. Before I press play, it's terrible on purpose. Yeah, that shit sounds terrible. That's intentionally bad. Don't even trip. We're gonna fix it. We're gonna rework this whole thing. But before we do that, we have to figure out what's wrong with it. And then we can make those adjustments. So number one, the melody is good, but the drums don't match it. That's trash. They don't match. Number two, the sound selection. The sounds are terrible. They don't sound good. And number three, this little counter melody. doesn't really go with it. I don't even think that might be the sounds even fit it. Those are a couple things we can fix up easy. So now that we know what's wrong with it, we could just take things bit by bit and try to find patterns that work. So I'm gonna delete all of this and just work with the first pattern. So this melody is in C sharp minor. I just pitched it down one so it could be in C minor. Let's go to the scale helpers and just put it in key. So C minor. Okay, so let's find the right sounds for this and just take it bit by bit. Let's work with the hi-hats first. So let's just find something that like pleases the ear. We'll just press play and see which one catches on. but I feel like I could add a little, just something to kind of like give a little bit more emphasis. I like this sound. Delete the O sounds. Make it tighter. Atmosphere, and I'm gonna add like this bass I use like all the time. It's called Growler Moog Bass. So it's sound and fire already. Let's just break it down really fast before we continue on. So remember I said those three issues that we were talking about. Counter melodies, the 
patterns, and the sound selection. I tackled two of those issues. The percussion pattern right here, It's sounding good, it's sounding clean, it gives a lot more space, and when I play with the melody, it complements the melody. That's one thing that I feel like you have to, as anybody says, like you have to simplify. Simplifying, I know I say it a lot, like I preach that a lot, but me, I don't like complicated stuff. I don't even like complex conversations with people. Like I like simple things. And in this case, simplicity works best. I could hear an artist on this already. So the second reason why this sounds good is because of sound selection. Listen, sound selection is 85% of the battle. I mean, if you start with terrible sounds, you're gonna get a terrible end product. It's just how it is. And with resources like Splice, I don't expect anybody to have terrible sounds because they're all right there at your disposal. I mean, listen to this sound. Look, I didn't even put them in a mixer. I didn't put no compressors, no EQs, no reverbs or anything like that because it already sounds good. And I already know that Johnny Giuliano, who has provided clean quality sounds for over 10 years, is a good go-to. So I promise you, if you go to your project files and you check sound selection first, and you switch that up and you switch them for some clean sounds, it'll sound way better and it'll hit way more. So a perfect example of a terrible sound. Listen to this. Look all the way up top here. You hear and you see that little clicking sound all the way at the top? That I wanna eliminate. So if I go to the filter, listen to how far I'd have to bring this filter down just for you to not hear it. If I use that 808, it's gonna sound very muddy in the mix. So it's better to just go and find a cleaner sound on Splice than use terrible sounds. All right, kicking 808 next. Uh, before I do that, you already know, I gotta throw a soft clicker on it. It just works, fam. All you gotta do is just turn stuff up. So let's find a kick that sticks out to us. So let's throw like a little counter melody or something in here. So now that I got a pretty decent counter melody, I felt like I could add more, but I'm not really trying to do too much because sample already has a lot of stuff in it. And that's another thing too. 
no one to stop like you don't have to keep adding all these sounds and shit like you could just listen to it be like okay that got a nice bop to it nice groove to it nice counter melody to it boom i don't have to like go too crazy i know i want a slow intro and then i want it to pick up over here so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make this unique leave this on stretch and then just bring this down an octave then i'm gonna change the color just so you can know the variation and it'll sound like this That way when it goes back to the regular pitch, I can have a couple different parts come in and then it'll sound like, it'll sound crazy. So to kind of like give that more emphasis, I need a riser. So risers are really good because they give your beat like uh, more impact. So this is sounding pretty good to me so far. Uh, all I gotta do is just make minor tweaks, but that's just too long for this video and I don't think you guys have the time. Uh, this is how you turn a boring beat, a boring, terrible sounding beat into something even better, even crazier with just adjusting sound selection, patterns, as well as counter melodies. So with that being said, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys got a lot of gems. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to play the beat as the outro, but let us know what else you guys want to see and I will catch you guys next time.